Good evening, this is Bell Gerald, and we are back with some more x 11 in virtual reality. Howdy, folks, and we are back here in x 11, and today we are in sunny Ibiza. That is the island, or one of the islands, in the Balearic Islands, which are just to the southeast of Spain in Europe. Uh, this particular scenery is brought to us by Orbix, and I'm going to be showing it off more in depth when we get to the actual review video. This behemoth, however, you should be somewhat familiar with. This is, of course, the X Trident CH47 Delta model Chinook. My absolute favorite helicopter. I'm so glad that X Trident brought this to X Plane. Now, for this very short video, short by my standards, what I'm going to be showing you today is how to start this bad boy. And then for our next video, we'll actually take a flight around Ibiza with the fully started. Chinook, and we'll do some shenanigans and so on and so forth, and I'll show you some of the other features that this thing has. You may find this particular livery familiar. I have shown this one in a preview video that I actually did about three months ago. However, the Black Pearl is back, and this is the helicopter that we're going to be using for this short series of videos, starting with this startup tutorial today. All right, so you're going to notice everything is pretty much locked down right now, and you're probably probably wondering, well, how do we get rid of all of that stuff? Well, there is going to be on your screen right now a little pop-up menu that will appear. Now, this pop-up menu does have multiple uses. You can uh, use it for your doors. You can use it for the miscellaneous items, such as all the tie-downs and whatnot. You can even use it to load or sling load vehicles and so on. So you'll find that it is incredibly useful. Now, a bit of a gotcha for my VR audience out there. This pop-up does not pop up in VR. So unfortunately, at least for right now, I've heard that uh, x Trident's working on it, but at least for right now, you're going to have to lift up your headset in order to manipulate the pop-up menu, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'm actually going to save you the trouble of me fumbling around in the headset, and we're going to cut to where I have all the tie-downs taken off. Okay, so through the magic of editing, we were able to get our tie-downs off, and we're actually going to move to the back of the helicopter for the beginning of the start sequence. Of course, every good start sequence starts with a good walk-around, so naturally uh, the pilot or the co-pilot, as, as the case may be, would make sure that everything is up to snuff. And we also have two crew members that would also be helping out with the whole startup process here. Now. X Trident did go the extra mile of providing us with said crew members. So you will actually see those two little guys walking in a moment here. And again, that's one of those things where we have to use the little pop up. So unfortunately, there's going to be another cut right now. All right, so we're waiting for our boys to show up. Uh, they should be walking on either side of the helo just to make sure that everything is kosher. While I'm back here, I'll also point out this little thing here. This is our APU. We are definitely going to need that for our startup. And then, of course, we've got engine one and engine two, which are both turbine engines. Oh, hello there, boys. About time you both showed up. Okay, and they've got their nifty little fire extinguishers, so they're pretty much ready for engine start. Guys, I will leave this to your capable hands while I go inside and get this party started. All right. Now, I'm not going to wax poetically about the interior of this thing, but suffice to say, I am really impressed with how they pulled this off. And I've been spending quite a lot of time in this bird. So, X Trident, kudos to you. If there was only thing I could ask for, uh, we need some more teleport hotspots. For example, my pilot seat, I can't get in there. But this is not a review video, so I'm going to let that slide, and we're going to hop in and say hi to Viper. Okay, so here we are in the office, and say hi to Viper. Hi there, Viper. Viper's feeling kind of quiet today. 
All right, but as you can see, they have modeled quite a great many things in this old bird. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, now, before we get started on the checklist, let me tell you really quickly about it. So the checklist that I'm going to be using is actually an abbreviated checklist that was given to me by an actual Chinook pilot. So I asked him for, you know, pretty much a down and dirty list, and this is what he was able to provide for me. So as I go through the steps, you're going to be seeing my usual yellow pop-up commentary at the bottom of the screen explaining what it is that I'm doing when. But bear in mind, this is not going to be 100% by the books. We're not going to do all the usual things that you would do if you were in a real-life Chinook. All right, but let's get the party started. So the first thing we're going to need is our battery, which is this switch all the way on the far left. So we'll flip that on. And now that the battery is on, we're probably going to want to do a caution and warning lights test. So we'll do that real quick with this switch here. Hold it down. Make sure all the lights come on. Everything looks good. Let it go. We can also do the same thing for the fire warning test. So we'll just hold that down. Yep, we definitely have two big red lights there. So we'll let that go. We're good to go. And looks like we have enough fuel for the day, so we should be good for this startup. All right, next order of business. We're going to need to get that APU up and running. Now, by default, the APU is pretty loud, but since this thing does have that pop-up that allows you to change the sounds, you can lower that so it's not as annoying. Now, the APU switch is just to the right of the battery here, and it's a three-position switch. So what you'll need to do is you'll actually need to put it to start, and then it will flip to run afterwards. So that's a two-step process there. So we have it on run. I usually hold it to start until I confirm that the APU is coming on. And then I let it go, and you'll notice it goes to run. We also have a green light there that indicates we've got a good APU start. And we can now turn on the APU Gen, which is this switch right here. The other two switches are for the regular engine generators, so we'll leave those off for now. All right, moving down my switch. The first thing, or my checklist, I should say. The first thing that we need to do is we need to set the power transfers one and two to on. Your power transfers are right here. So this is one, and this is two. So there we go. Next order of business, the FADEC, the backup power, needs to be on. The FADEC is this central area here, and the backup power is this fat switch right here, so we'll flip that to the down position. All right. Next, we want the fuel pump switches, but only one engine. We're only going to start one engine for now. So, all of your fuel pump switches are here, and your auxiliary ones for the front and aft, and then, of course, your main ones here. So we want the left side ones, so we'll flip this down, as well as this. And we will also need to open the cross feed, which is this switch right here. Now that we have that done, the next order of business is going to be the ECL, or the uh, control levers here. You notice there's two, one for each engine. We're gonna set the left side one to ground. That's how we're going to get this engine started up here. All right. And with that having been done, we're pretty much set for the actual engine start. I'm always in the habit of going to the lights and making sure that those are on. So we'll just get our anti-collision lights on right now. I know that the manual, the real manual, also says you need to have the uh, EAPS open, the EAPS switches open. It doesn't really matter in X-Plane. You can keep them off and uh, it'll still start up as we're going to find out right now. Now, in order to start up, here's what we need to do. This is going to be the switch that we're using. And this switch uh, goes either left or right. It's another three-way toggle that's centered. So when we hold it to the left, we're going to wait for the NG gauge to get past 10. When that happens, the temperature gauge should also go up past the green line. It should not, however, go all the way into the little red line. As long as everything goes up to there, then we can let go of the start switch and we're good to go for engine one. So let's put that in theory. 
first, we're going to gingerly touch the switch. And hold it down. Watch our gauges. So we are at 10 mg, and there goes the temperature. So now we can let go of the start switch. We have a good start on engine one. NG is going up. You'll see it getting to the yellow line there. Temperature is pretty stable. So engine one is good to go. All right, now, pretty much we need to repeat that same process for engine two. So here's what we did. First, we got our fuel pumps on for engine two. Then we set our ECL to ground. And now we will need to hold the right side of the switch until we get MG10, which is just about there right now. Here comes the temperature. Perfect, now we can let go of the switch. So we've got great starts on both engines one and two. We're just waiting for everything to power up fully. And at this point in time, uh, you can probably do some other minor housekeeping stuff, but obviously I'm not gonna include it in this start tutorial. If you are following by the books, then of course there's other stuff that you may wanna do. Okay, but since we have both of those engines on, now we can get our generators on. And we are also going to want to get the ECLs into flight mode. Right now they're at that ground idle. So to get them to flight, we're going to flip them forward. And we'll watch as everything comes up. We're a little bit sketchy there, but it looks like everything's finally settling down. So engine one and engine two are going back to their proper positions. Very good, very good. So since our generators are on, we're actually drawing our electrical power from both engines, which now means we no longer need the APU. So we can turn APU gen back off, and we can also kill the APU. There we go. You would think we're done, but no, we're not 100% done just yet. So now that we have all of that done, the last couple of things that we will need to do is we will need to get our hydraulic power transfer switches back up. And we will probably want to get the auxiliary fuel tanks all on. So we'll set those up. And honestly, I'm not even 100% certain if we need to have the crossfeed open. I think not, if I remember uh, reading the manual properly, but it was not written on my quick and dirty checklist. But we're going to turn it off for now because we've got all the fuel pumps on, so we should be good to go. And believe it or not, folks, that is it. Now, you will notice that we still have a caution and warning light on there. The reason for that, if we zoom into the center panel, our autopilot is off. So... We can turn that on. However, if we are actually going to be doing taxiing to the runway, which is what I will do in the full review video that's coming next, we would really keep that off. Which, of course, will put your caution and warning lights on. But it's up to you. If you're going to take off virtually, go ahead and put your autopilot on, and that's pretty much all you need to do. Uh, there is one thing, however, that we did not take into consideration, and that's our little guys. So, we're going to go back to the outside of the helicopter, and uh, we'll tell those guys they can come in now. So to pop the little guys back in the helicopter, we need to make sure that the ramp and the side door are both down completely. You can set them to walk and they will of course automatically go into the helicopter, or you can alternately just eliminate them all together and check mark where it says landing assistant, and that will actually put them in their proper position. So we're pretty much set to go. We can raise the ramp, we can close the door, we can do all of that good jazz there, and we can actually take off and fly. So that will pretty much do it 
for right now for this particular start tutorial video. Like I said, I just wanted to give you the basics and I wanted to keep it as short as I possibly could. When we come back with the full review video, we'll pick up where we left off and we'll go flying around Ibiza. So I will see you then. Thank you as always for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I have been flying in X-Plane 11 using the X Trident CH-47 Chinook. And we are here at Orbix Balearic Islands. If you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I will catch you on the full review video coming next. Ciao.